<laughs> okay, uh, real quick, you guys, I'm actually going to give you guys time to ask questions and work, okay? Um, whether it be on uh, an old assignment, if you didn't quite have that done, uh, on the new assignment that I'll give you after this, whatever it is, but I want you to get some good time to work and ask questions. So, anyway, last thing here. Uh, determine a sample size given a certain margin of error, okay? So, let's say you're going to conduct a poll, all right, and you know that you want to be 95% confident on an interval you come up with, and you want your margin of error to be less than plus or minus 3%. Okay? Well, in order to make that happen, you're going to need a certain size of sample. Okay? There's going to have to be some certain size of sample that you're going to use so, the ma so mathematically you can be within that 3%. Okay? Plus or minus 0.03. So recall that on a confidence interval, You did p hat plus or minus z star times the square root of p hat q hat over n. Right? Okay? That's your confidence interval. Which part of this represents your margin of error? The right side, the, the Z star times this. Because a lot of times you'll see, you know, 74% uh, plus or minus 3%. This is your margin of error right back here, okay? So if you're given, all right, a certain margin of error that you want, okay, you're just going to use the fact that margin of error is equal to z star times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. And you're just going to use this right here to solve for n. So, let's go ahead and say we want a 95% confident interval like we said there, okay? 95% confidence interval, and we want our plus or minus 3% for our margin of error, okay? Let's say that's what we want to report when we report this statistic out, okay? So, your margin of error was... 3%, so 0 0.03. 95% confidence interval. Okay. This is where, let's be really accurate. Okay. In the past, we've just used 2 to kind of approximate it. <clears throat> but recall from the text, or you could get out your Z chart, Z star for 95% confidence is that 1.96. Okay, 1.96. It's not 2, it's actually 1.96. Everybody know what I'm talking about there? Yes, no? Yes. He knows? Okay, so if you look on your... For a 95% confidence interval, so 95% from here to here, that means there would be 5% here, or excuse me, 2.5% here and 2.5% here, right? Mm -hmm. So on my Z chart, I'm going to look for, if there's 2.5% here, that would be 97.5 or 0.975. Okay? If I'm looking for 0.975, it is actually 1.96 on my Z table. 1.96 standard deviations away. How about on your calculator, what's it give you? I'm assuming that's what you just did. What's that? 1.9599. So really, really close to 1.96, right? 
That's how many standard deviations away from the middle you'd have to go to, to include 95% of the data. Okay? So Z star in this case is 1.96 times the square root. Now we haven't done our poll yet, so we don't know what P hat and Q hat are. Worst case scenario, okay, they're both 0.5. Okay, they're both 0.5, so that's what we'll use here. We don't know. We use 0.5, make note of this if you need to. We use 0.5 there because that's the, the worst possible case or the largest discrepancy that there could be. Okay? This is the largest number you could get. 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. Try taking any other two decimals that add up to one, all right, um, and get it to be a number larger than 0.25. So you always use 0.5 and 0.5? Mm-hmm. So yes. we use 0.5 and 0.5 because oh, why? Because we don't know our P hat and our Q hat yet. We haven't done the poll, right? Yeah. We haven't actually figured out our sample proportion. But we know we want to keep our margin of error at this 0.03 amount. Okay? Well, we want this multiplication to be the largest number possible. So that means we're definitely going to be within that 3% right here. So the way you make this right here the largest possible is you make them both 0.5s. Because let's say you have 0.6 and 0.4. What's 0.6 times 0.4? 0.24. Oh. What's 0.5 times 0.5? 0.25. Uh, Try and get bigger than 0.25. You can't. I thought I succeeded. Oh, yeah, no. You can't. You can't get larger than 0.25 right here. Okay? So if we want to make sure we, we stay here or below, we want to make this as large as is possible. And since we haven't done the sample, or we haven't taken the sample yet and gotten that sample statistic out of there, we just leave them as 0.5s for the time being. Okay? All right. So, um, 0.03 equals 1.96. Using some algebra, you have really the square root of 0.5 times the square root of 0.5. Five divided by the square root of n. Because you can separate these into individual square roots because it's multiplication and division. Why is it all over the square root of n? Oh, that help? You need to just divide both sides by. Sure, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to multiply both sides by the square root of n. Then take all these times each other and divide by 0.03. But what you're saying would work. Because then you're going to... If you divide by 1.96, well, you'll move that over. And then at that point, then you can multiply by the square root of n. But then you've got to still multiply those two together and then divide by whatever you got there. I, I think it's an extra step, but it, yeah. it wouldn't be wrong at all, Drew. Okay. okay. A little brain lapse. Just how would we attack this? Multiply both sides by this. All right. So then I have 0 0.03 times the square root of n equals that. All right. I'm good for here, then, I think. Okay. There you go. I was just, the square root n thing was just really good to me. Now I got it. So now, take that times that times that on my calculator. And then. Divided by this. So then you'll have the square root of n equals, I don't know. 32.66. How much? 32.6 repeating. 32.6 repeating. I could be wrong. No, that's right. Okay. Now we want to find n, so square both sides, right? Square undoes the square root. So squared, squared. N is if there's a decimal, go up to the next person because you want to have a whole number of samples. 1,068. 
So if you want to meet those conditions, if you want to have a 95% confidence interval, and you want to be within plus or minus 3 for a mar 3% for a margin of error, that's got to be your sample size. Okay? All right, well, if you need a sample size that large, we're, that's obviously more difficult to do than a sample size that is smaller. It's going to be more time consuming, potentially it's going to be more expensive, all right? Uh, whether it's time or actual uh, data collection, which requires goods or products or paper or whatever it is, okay, to collect that data. The larger N is, the more time consuming and the more expensive it's going to be. So you need to weigh out, is it important to get this many? If you don't want to get this many people in your sample, what are you going to have to live with as far as reporting your statistic? Lower confidence interval or greater margin of error. You're going to have to be fine with that. Okay? If you're not, if you want that to be your confidence interval and you want that to be your margin of error, there's your sample size you will need to get. Okay? Yes? So to make, that, so to make your confidence higher and your, uh, your interval smaller, would you, you would increase the end? Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very good. Okay, so I keep getting 326. Okay, we'll try and fix it. I'm going to stop the recording and I'll try and fix it.